this is the second part of the chapter artificial intelligence by gareth southwell here we look at what exactly is turing test this is something that is mentioned in the chapter uh, what is turing test so turing test is a test done to find out whether a computer has artificial intelligence or a system has artificial intelligence okay so that is turing test it is uh, done to find out whether a system has artificial intelligence now the turing test is named after alan turing who pioneered machine learning in 1940s and 50s turing introduced the test in his 1950 paper called computing machinery and intelligence while at university of manchester turing proposed that a computer can be said to possess artificial intelligence if it can mimic human responses under specific conditions so this is a turing test so what is it used for it is used for finding out whether a system has artificial intelligence okay so if a system or if a computer passes this test we can say that it has artificial intelligence so how is this done the original turing test requires three terminals okay terminal one terminal two terminal three so the original turing test uh, needs three terminals each of which is physically separated from the other two so each terminal see this terminal and this terminal all these terminals are physically separated from each other okay okay so each terminal is separated from each other now one terminal is operated by a computer you can see that this terminal is operated by a computer this is a human being this is a human and this terminal has a computer during the test one of the humans humans functions as a questioner so here this is the person who will who acts as a questioner and this questioner will be asking questions to this human being as well as the computer now he doesn't know which is a human being and which is the computer now the questioner interrogates the respondents within a specific area and after a specified time or number of questions the questioner is asked to decide which is the computer and which is a human being okay so he will be asking questions to this human being and this computer without knowing which who which is a computer and which is a human being he doesn't know who is sitting in this terminal and who is sitting in this terminal he'll be just blindly asking questions now after a while he has to decide which is a human being and which is a computer and now if the person gets confused if this questioner is getting confused you know he can't understand which is a human being and which is a computer which means that this computer has artificial intelligence because the computer successfully fooled this human being all right so that is a turing test okay so um, let's look at the notes the original turing test requires three terminals each of which is physically separated from the other two one terminal is operated by a computer while the other two are operated by humans during the test one of the humans functions as a questioner while the second human and and the computer function as respondents the questioner interrogates the respondents within a specific area after a preset length of time or number of questions the questioner is asked to decide which respondent was human and which was a computer the test is repeated many times and if the questioner confuses the computer for a human the questioner is considered to have artificial um, the computer is considered to have artificial intelligence okay so that is a turing test the next question is why did the stock market crash of 2010 happen according to the author now the stock market crashed in USA on March on May 6 2010 and it was known as 2010 flash crash now what is a flash crash a flash crash is an event in electronic securities markets wherein the withdrawal of stock orders rapidly amplifies price declines in the stock market London or a type of crash on and the chala computerized type of systems which operate in the stock markets on pattern on down the crash on a flash crash in the arena it ha happens in electronic securities markets uh, where there is heavy use of um, artificial intelligence so what happens is that 
suppose there is a you know the machine the artificial intelligence detects a, a sudden selling in uh, one or more companies uh, to a lossy but it will think that you know suddenly all the stocks are being sell something bad is going to happen therefore to reduce losses what does it do it suddenly tells sells off stocks you understand stock market veedunno annu thonnite idum suddenly ee machine suggest cheyum ella stocks um vikkanayittan and angane varumbe endu vettum large amounts of uh, selling off will happen and the stock market will crash all right so ഇവിടെ ഹ്യൂമൻ ഇൻ്റർവെൻഷൻ ഇല്ലാതെ മെഷീൻസിൻ്റെ ബുദ്ധി വെച്ച് മാത്രം ഓപ്പറേറ്റ് ചെയ്തത് കൊണ്ട് വന്ന ഒരു ക്രാഷാണ് ഈ ഫ്ലാഷ് ക്രാഷ് ഓഫ് ട്വൻറ്റി ടെൻ ഓക്കെ സോ ഫ്ലാഷ് ക്രാഷ് ഇസ് എൻ ഇവൻറ്റ് ഇൻ ഇലക്ട്രോണിക് സെക്യൂരിറ്റീസ് മാർക്കറ്റ്സ് വെയർ ഇൻ ദ വിഡ്രോൾ ഓഫ് സ്റ്റോക്ക് ഓർഡേഴ്സ് റാപ്പിഡ്ലി ആംപ്ലിഫൈസ് പ്രൈസ് ഡിക്ലൈൻസ് ആൻഡ് ദെൻ ക്വിക്ക്ലി റിക്കവേഴ്സ് പെട്ടെന്ന് അത് റിക്കവർ ആകുകയും ചെയ്യും ഓക്കെ the result appears to be a rapid sell off of securities that can happen over a few minutes resulting in dramatic declines however usually by the end of the trading day as prices have rebounded it's as if the flash crash never happened a flash crash like the one that occurred on may 6 2010 is exacerbated as computer trading programs react to aberrations in the market such as heavy selling in one or more securities so e computer programs nokumba there is heavy selling in one or two securities and what does it do it automatically begin selling large volumes at an increasingly rapid pace to avoid losses appo market idiyunno nu thonnite automatic aayittu idu large selling nadathum you understand as trading becomes more digitalized flash crashes are usually triggered by computer algorithms rather than a piece of a uh, piece of market or company news that causes the quick sell off so it's completely based on algorithms the algorithms are based on and nadakkunna allade sherikkum oru real problem undayittalla ingane sell offs nadakkunnathu the computer program detects you know large scale selling and therefore it thinks that something bad is going to happen and idam angotte sell off cheyan thodangum to avoid losses anganeyana 2010 ile flash crash undayathu now this is just extra information as the price continues to drop and more benchmarks are triggered it can cause a domino effect a domino kandittille onnu oru piece thattumba vera ella ingane chain aayittu ingane veelum appo ee flash crash anganeyana undavunnathu oru side oru side la problem kandittu idu sell off thodangum pinne large amount of uh, large scale selling will happen okay so it sets off a sudden plunge in value note uh, see now there are mechanisms in place to prevent this from happening for example circuit breakers ingena petta ingena ingenate aberrations kaanuvaanengil circuit breakers und ipo what it will do is that it pauses or completely stops trading activity trading activity ang freeze cheyum ingena panic lotu povadirikkan vendi now there are mechanisms in place but 2010 Uh, what happened was that this flash crash happened because human beings were in present and it was managed by all the sell off was managed by computerized systems so this is one of the drawbacks of artificial intelligence adana parayna idu a drawback on artificial intelligence in there where such uh, panic situations can be created now the next question is what is uh, the physicist roger penrose's argument based on now roger penrose's argument um, is on whether computer is actually conscious computer ne sherikkum or a conscious mind undo whether human beings and computers are the same whether artificial intelligence can be called uh, as conscious as human beings now this is roger penrose why is he important he is a nobel prize winner in physics in 2010 okay the person at the uh, left end is roger penrose okay here is roger penrose with his physics nobel prize that he won in 2020 okay he is um, a very very famous physicist he has worked with uh, stephen hawkins and um, people of eminence in in uh, the area of physics in the world so what is the physicist roger penrose's argument based on now roger penrose believes that human consciousness is not computational um roger penrose what he says is that in a human mind is not like artificial intelligence it cannot artificial intelligence cannot be um compared with human mind 
okay so roger penrose believes that human consciousness is not computational according to him our awareness is not simply a mechanistic byproduct like something we can make a machine do this position makes us question the nature of artificial intelligence artificial intelligence is after uh, is a compute is after all this is an all okay sorry after all okay it's a mistake here artificial intelligence after all um is a computational entity or cut off this after artificial intelligence is a computational entity that's also fine okay artificial intelligence is a computational entity and all it does it does is sorry there are two mistakes in this line is okay all it does is actually follow rules human consciousness is way more advanced than that and cannot be compared with today's artificial intelligence the artificial intelligence and that chain is actually following some rules we are not following rules we are constantly our consciousness is constantly uh, learning things constantly understanding things at the pace that no artificial intelligence can match for instance when a computer deeper blue defeated the world chess champion gary kasparov in 1999 all it actually did was to do advanced computing and follow rules extreme capability to do number crunching is not consciousness human consciousness is much more advanced than that see whatever artificial intelligence is it's actually doing a lot of based on a lot of algorithms a lot of computing a lot of num number crunching and jane the but human mind is not like that it is much more complex than that roger penrose argues that mathematicians may recognize truths about mathematical system here rod argues okay roger penrose argues that ma mathematicians may recognize truths about mathematical systems that are not provable within those systems and there will be certain truths about a computer program that a computer program cannot comprehend but a human being can see or computer program ne ella manasilavanam nilla or mathematician aa systemathinte porathulla karyangalu manasilavum but a computer can only understand things that are within that system so if there is a need to use a system that is outside of uh, that system which it's currently using it will not understand it you understand a computer program uh, playing chess uh, if suppose some other kind of logic has to be used there it will not understand it okay but a human being will be able to Uh, understand that so roger penrose says that human mind is not like the computer it recognizes truths about systems that are not provable within those systems we'll stop there